Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. Okay, it is time to start a new game. We have, uh... The, uh, uh... Crusader Kings 2 has upgraded to 2.1.1, and we have the Rajas of India pack. DLC, right there. So, what changes does that have in store for us? Let's go to the single player. Well, looks pretty much the same here, doesn't it? Oh, look, so much more land to choose from. Basically, everything here between here and here is completely new. All of that. Ah, oh, that is going to be great. So much more land to conquer. But sadly, not, not as our Welsh Empire. Um, see if we go here and try to load up. Can't load it up. So, um, I do actually have a uh, a save that we will be starting, but uh, we're going to do that in the next episode. This episode is primarily going to be about going over the differences in the game as it stands right now. So, first things first, um, they shaved off a little bit of the map here, so we lost a little bit of the islands of Canaria. And uh, Iceland got moved in closer, I believe, because it's not directly north of uh, Ireland, as I recall. I have to look at a map again to see, to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Oh, they changed the color of Lotharingia, too. Interesting. I wonder what else they changed. Um. I don't see anything else obviously changed. Uh, I'm not sure if they've made any other significant changes uh, to the historical starts here. Um, but they've added... Um, they haven't added more territories here, but they expanded these counties so that they just look a little bit bigger. And if you remember uh, from before, this county here... Uh, Igil was off as like a, a lobe. Same thing with Tadmecha, it was this little lobe thing just sticking off. Here is the first place they've made major changes. Uh, if you remember the old map, um, the county lines basically went right down there like that, cutting off this part of the Nile. It, it was not part of any county, which was kind of weird. Um, so they've corrected that. Um, I don't think they made any changes, although I think Bahrain was not an independent county before it is now. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. Um, they've added these counties up here for Yugra. Uh, there's Kyrgyz, Zetyusu, uh, Kumania has expanded, of course. The Yagbuids have expanded. Samanids have expanded. Uh, Safarids have gotten more land, and then they've added in the Shahi, uh, Habari, uh, Pratahara, Pala, Harake Harakela, uh, Samatata, uh, Mlechacha, something like that, Bana, a bunch more countries that I'm not going to bother uh, butchering the, the names of. <coughs> so there are some quite large kingdoms out here already. And we are going to be playing down there. Um, but we'll go over a little bit more of what the changes are. Um, Famagusta is no longer part of the Abbasids, which uh, that is one change. And uh, we've got a lot more little kingdoms down here that are potential choices. If we switch to the religions, we'll see that there is... Um, a Jewish ruler down here now, in addition to the Jewish ruler up here, which this county got uh, its uh, borders altered slightly. And uh, there is also the Nestorian uh, kingdom down here. Uh, otherwise, most of these are Miaphysite. Uh, if we look at the cultures, um, I don't think much has changed with these. Um, but of course we've got uh, Persian, there's Afghan, 
Baloch, Baloch, is it Baloch or Baloch? I don't know. Sindhi, uh, Punjabi, Rajput, Gujarati, Hindustani, Maharathi, Oriya, which is where we're going to be playing, Bengali, Assamese, Telugu, Tamil, um, Sinhala, Kannada. So those are the new cultures down there. And Karluk, Kyrgyz, and Kanti are new uh, cultures up here. I don't think there are any significant changes uh, to uh, mainland Europe. Uh, I think ba Basque might have gotten more territory. I'm not sure. Um, I think they changed the colors. I don't think Nubian was green before. Could be wrong. Uh, that's that. Um, huh, Lotharingia has... The King of Burgundy? Ah, he's King of Burgundy and Lotharingia. Okay, that explains that. Alright, I was just curious. Um, so, that is the significant changes from the start. Uh, we also, uh, if we zoom out a bit more, and we can jump through some of the changes. So you'll see that there are a lot of different uh, um, countries here already, realms there already. And, of course, uh, the Seljuks come in at that point. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Um... That one is still Nestorian. That one is still uh, Jewish at that point in time. That's still Jewish there. Not much change there. So we're going to be uh, sticking with uh, the earliest start, of course. But uh, you can see how some of this uh, changes here as uh, uh, through the various historical starts. Uh, there's the Mongol Empire right there. Um, not sure if they changed the start date on that one or not. Uh, the rise of the Hansa, that has become the Golden Horde at that point. And uh, this is the final point uh, of the, star the historical starts. Um, I don't know that they made many changes to these others uh, out over here or not. Uh, but we are going to be starting in 867. So, um, again, this is going to be just going over changes to the game. So this is going to be where we're going to be starting. Um, go ahead and play as this character temporarily. Like I said, I've got the save game that we'll be going to where I've min-maxed my starting character, of course. Um, but we will be starting as the Count. Um, so as you can see, with an Indian religion, um, I'm going to change to the, uh, the layout. Um, and let's take a look first at some of the, uh, uh, other changes. So, they've added diplomatic range. So you cannot, you can no longer send people to the far corners of the world. So let's go ahead and see about studying technology. As you can see, the Indian uh, um, diplomatic range at this point is really about the Safarids, which is why I can go here, because that's part of the same realm. Uh, it's based on rulers, so technically, if, let's say, the Byzantine Emperor somehow managed to conquer a piece of territory over here, we would then be able to send our uh, counselors up here, um, but only in the uh, territories that he controls. Uh, so that's a big difference. So we will no longer be seen. Uh, we we cannot, you know, interact with most of Europe at this point. Um, you should no longer see um, pagan rulers of Scandinavia marrying. You know, pagan women from uh, Ghana. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what other changes are there? Um, 
they've changed faction revolts. Uh, I can't really see much here because I don't. This is a brand new game. But now, rather than uh, like if you remember from some of our previous games uh, uh, episodes, we had some uh, minor rebellions, I believe. Um, and of course, when we saw rebellions pop up in other nations, they'd all be independent realms. We could just go in and sweep up some of them. Um, that will no longer happen. So if, let's say, there is a rebellion against West Francia, the rebels will be under one guy, probably whoever leads the um, faction. Um, and they will be... Uh, uh, they, they will have the uh, a, a same title level as uh, the king. So they will be a temporary king while they're leading the revolt. Uh, let's see what else. Um, they've changed uh, supply limits so that you cannot just march armies across the world anymore. Um, we'll be going over that more as we actually get to that. Uh, I'm now playing in the windowed mode um, rather than uh, the full screen. It looks the same, but I could alt-tab out of it more easily. And I can use uh, Bandicam to record, which I'm trying out right now. Uh, let's see. There is... So there are more flexible unit types. Uh, let's take a look at our military now. Um... Go to retinues. We've got the same basic retinues right now. Special units. It still has the horse archer icon right here, it looks like. Um, but our special unit is going to be war elephants and archers. 30 war elephants and 470 archers. Hmm. Let's see if we can see. Retinue cap usage is 1,000. That's... Interesting there. All right, let's uh, take a look at um, maybe what we can raise up here military, militarily. Right, let's see what we've got here. Uh, ten light cavalry, ten heavy infantry. Okay, so we can't really see the special units right now. Um, go over that more later, I guess. Uh, what else? Um. <laughs> so there's a lot of little things that they've changed for, um, uh, some of the layouts and some of the interactions. We do now have uh, a relations tab. So we've got friends, rivals, marriage ties, lovers. Hopefully we'll get more friends and rivals. That, that would be nice. More lovers, too, is uh, uh, potential. Um, on the religion screen, we've got our uh, holy sites, whether they're held by uh, people of our uh, faith. This is not held by the Hindu faith. That is not held by the Hindu faith. We get a bonus to the morale of our armies. Um, if we go on the intrigue level, we can demand a duchy from our liege. That's normal. We could convert to Buddhism, convert to Jainism, and change religious branch. Um, I need 50 prestige before I can do that. I cannot do that with Zealous. Uh, I cannot do that with Zealous. Alright, so we cannot do these with zealous. We need prestige of fifth, uh, 500 to do those, but we'll be able to convert uh, religions between the Indian religions. Uh, let's see. Um, we can hold a tiger hunt, which is basically like the, the, uh, the hunt for our uh, for the Europeans. Uh, we get choose a patron deity. I'll get an event to choose uh, what my patron is. Uh, I will be doing that. Uh, we can search for a guru, which I assume is like a um, pilgrimage. Has personal wealth of at least 50 gold. Um, and then there's a Diwali feast, which is like the regular feast. Uh, it can only be held in at the end of the year. 
So those are the major differences there that we'll be going over. Uh, but we'll do that more in depth uh, uh, as we play through the game. Uh, this is just kind of a looking over stuff, so I'm not going over it too much when uh, we're actually playing. Uh, we get War Elephant Pens. That's our special uh, unit uh, building type here. Not going to get many War Elephants. Um, not sure how to take a look at uh, what our type is. It looks like we might not be able to do that yet uh, until we actually get them. That's a little unfortunate. Um... So that's basically going to be it. Uh, you can take a look at the uh, 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 culture here. So we are uh, Oria, and we're going to be expanding there. Uh, we are part of the De Jure Duchy of uh, Tosali. Um, does this guy have that? He does not have that, uh, so I'm not sure what duchy I could demand from him. Whatever. We'll figure that out later as we play. Uh, we've got the De Jure Kingdoms. We are part of the De Jure Kingdom of Risa, which is going to be our second goal after getting the uh, duchy. And these are all the other kingdoms in India. Uh, quite a few of them. Uh, Perm just got expanded out that way. Kumania got expanded out that way. Sure, empires. Tartaria got expanded out that way. Russia got expanded out that way. Uh, Persian Empire, of course. Rajasthan. Bengal Empire. Deccan Empire. Um, I think that's really the only major changes to any of that. Well, let's take a quick look to see if any of the uh, kingdoms got altered at all. That I can tell, obviously. Uh, doesn't really look like it. And this is the nature of the uh, religions in India right now. So, that is the introduction to Rajas of uh, India. In the next episode, we will actually load up our save game and uh, get started with our uh, character, who will of course be named Alt Dragon. See you next time.